Thank you very much for inviting me and sorry for the delay. I'm a turf grass agronomist at NIBIO, as Eric said, working in the turf grass research group, and we are testing grass for sustainable management of golf courses, football pitches and lawns. Uh, our new RoboGolf project is uh, using, we are using the small Husqvarna robotic mowers for fairways, as you see on the photo here. Uh, and we are comparing them with the traditional fairway mowers. It's real or cylinder mowers. And we're also using them on, on the Simirov, where we are comparing them with the, the rotary mower, the traditional Simirov mowers. <clears throat> yeah. And here on the next, next slide here, you see a, a photo, uh, an overview of our Robogolf research area, where we compare the robotic and the manual mowing. And to the right, we have the fairway plots, um, and to the left, we have the Semirov plots. Um, and we evaluate the turf grass visual quality. Uh, it's both the mowing quality, uh, the coverage of the grass, weeds and diseases, and also the color of the grass. Uh, but we do, do also have trials on, on real golf courses. And here on the slide here, you see the four course managers that we are working together with in the, in the RoboGolf project on their golf courses. These uh, four guys here, they have uh, done a great job to evaluate the robotic mowing on their courses. So it's uh, Erdle from Norway, it's Lesse from Denmark, it is Markus from Sweden and Bjarni from Iceland. On each of their golf courses, uh, two robotic mowers from Husqvarna were installed, one on the fairway, as you see here on the photo from Jönköping in Sweden, uh, and half of the fairway was mown uh, or is mown by the robot, and the other half of the fairway is mown traditionally. And here in Sweden, the traditionally mown fairway is mown at uh, three times per week in 13 millimeters. Next photo here, you see we did the same on the Simirov. The photo here is from Norway, uh, where you see the experimental plot in the, with the rotary mower in the Simirov. Uh, and then we compared it to a robotic mown area just beside in the, in the Simirov. And this uh, Simirov was mown two times per week in uh, 30 millimeters. And you also see the, the evaluation plot of one square meter here on the photo. And what the course managers did was that each month from May to October, they evaluated permanent plots uh, of one square meter in each area, both the robotic and the manual mown area. And they evaluated the turf grass visual quality on a scale from one to nine, where nine is best. And they also evaluated the percentage of weeds and diseases in these experimental plots. And immediately after they have did these, uh, done these evaluations, they were reported to me via an app on their cell phones. So I got the results from this immediately. And that was very nice because now we can show you some of the results. Uh, I'm not going to show you all the results, just some of the results. Uh, here are the results uh, last year from the fairway in Norway. And what we see here, it's the turf grass quality on the fairway. Uh, on the scale here, it's a high quality, as you see, both the robotic and the manual mown from and observations from May to October. And the light green line is the robotic mown areas and the dark green line is the traditionally mown areas. And in fact, what we see here on the fairway is that we see no differences, no significant differences between robotic mowing and traditional mowing, but both have a high high quality, high turf grass quality on the fairway. Um, next slide here is the turf grass quality in the Simirov. And here we see uh, bigger differences. Um, in fact, we see uh, differences here in May and also in August. And in fact, these differences between the robotic moon, the light green line and the ordinary mown, the dark green line, these differences here are significant. So we can see from last year that in May and in August, the robotic mown areas were better in turf grass quality than the ordinary mown areas in Norway. 
Uh, what we also see here from the results here from last year is that the robotic moon areas are more uniform than the traditional moon areas. Uh, here the quality goes up and down a little bit more. But remember, these are preliminary results and uh, uh, we'll, so the project will continue for two more years, so we'll see what happens the next years. Um, and about the results from Denmark, Sweden and Iceland, they were almost the same or very similar to the results here from Norway. I'm, I don't have time to show you all the results. But uh, I want to show you some pictures uh, taken from some of the course managers. Here's an, a photo from Iceland in uh, August last year. The, green, uh, the course manager up there, Bjarne, he took photos here showing that uh, the robotic mown area to the right, there's no dew in the mornings. Um, compared to the traditional moon area to the left with the dew in the grass. Um, what you also see here is that the, the, you don't see the distinct lines from the traditional fairway mower as you usually see. You see the more random lines from the, the robot. Another picture I have here from Iceland. Showing here, yeah, that's also an observation from the from the green keep on Iceland. And what he observed here was that uh, if you see the robotic mown area here, it's also the the fairway. And compared to the traditional mown area, what Bjarne uh, observed was uh, it was in July last year. He observed that there were less seed heads of annual bluegrass in the robotic moan fairway compared to the traditional moan fairway. Maybe it's it's a bit difficult to see on this picture, but uh, Bjarne, Bjarne observed it. And of course, uh, these findings are just preliminary again. They are just observations, so they're not confirmed, but we will have a look at that the next year. So yeah. We also did a survey among the players on the golf courses, uh, asking them what the attitude were to the to the robots, and all in all, all the attitude were positive. Um, some of the comments from the players were that uh, the fairway or the rough is always newly cut, and there are no grass cuttings, um, and we don't have to wait for the staff to cut the grass. But also there were some negative uh, comments. I think around 10 to 11 percent have had had uh, of the players had had a negative experience, and it was mostly uh, due to situation where the robot hit their ball, or they hit the robot, and they ask what are the rules. So it's important to have clear rules, local rules about how to manage manage this this new technology on the golf courses. Yes. And my last slide here, I want to show you here. It's a photo from uh, from a field day we had last year in August in uh, at the golf course Berum, Berheim in Norway. Um, in fact, it was going to be it had it was planned to be an international uh, arrangement, but due to COVID-19, we could only arrange it as a local uh, event for the no local Norwegian greenkeepers. But the project continues for two more years and we have planned another field day in uh, September this year, 21 here in Denmark at the Greno Golf Club. And we hope very much to be able to 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 make that arrangement. And also next year at the golf course in Sweden in Jönköping, we would like to do a, a international field day. I want to thank uh, Husqvarna, our sponsors and uh, staff, the Scandinavian Turfgrass Environmental Research Foundation uh, for funding this project. And at last, I want to say a big thanks to the course managers and green keepers on the golf courses that are involved in, in the RoboGolf project. Without them, we were not able to, to fulfill it. So thank you for me.